Let, I, I do want to go next to uh, Kim Hung Chong. Kim, Kim uh, I mean, Atatouré and also uh, Jean-Marie have talked about climate and the financing of global public goods. And one of the issues <coughs> on the table is how do we deal with the financing of global public goods, uh, which are clearly underfinanced. And I know you've been thinking about this. You want to talk a bit about that issue. Uh, what's your take on, on this? Okay. Uh, thank you for, first of all, thank you for the having me. Uh, this is very, uh, very meaningful I mean, the, uh, venue. And then I'd like to talk about the, uh, the where, uh, what kind of world we are living. Because the, uh, now, uh, I was in, in Moscow the last week of the, uh, the October, and I was surrounded by the, uh, the many scholars uh, who have a quite a very, quite a different uh, way of thinking uh, compared to the, uh, the participants here. And then we talked about the many things about the global governance. Uh, last night, I, when I was arrived here, uh, I had a look at the, uh, the <coughs> title, the global governance, and then in Baldai, uh, they try to talk about the, uh, the many issues that um, now the world can be uh, going on uh, without any global governance. And what the, uh, the global governance they mean is that, um, you know, uh, a kind of the, uh, the platform or existing uh, order uh, the, that was established since the, uh, the Second World War. So. What I recognized, I mean, uh, while I was there, was that um, there are big differences, big contrasts uh, between two group of people, how to understand the contemporary world. So we are now uh, observing the big chasm, I mean, big chasm uh, between the two groups of people. And so this kind of fragmentation and the block sization uh, is now very, very uh, substantial as we recognize. And then second, uh, we are now uh, facing the very rapid transformation, great transformation like the digitalization and then also you know, green transformation. And also we have uh, the unforeseen you know, the events like the uh, pandemic and the war. So all of these kind of things uh, make the, uh, uh, our the existing world uh, to create the, uh, the global public goods. So now we are now getting more difficult in creating all of this the, the global uh, public goods, which the, uh, the many developing countries and the underdeveloped countries uh, can develop and grow uh, based on the, uh, this kind of the, the platform or the existing order. And then I think that is one of the main reasons why the, uh, we are now suffering from the, uh, uh, providing a proper level of the uh, global public goods. So uh, when it comes to the international development or uh, overseas development assistance, also we are now combating uh, the poverty and then global health crisis and also the side effect of digitalization, also the climate crisis all of things uh, can be contributing to the, uh, uh, the big change of the structure of the ODA now. And this can uh, be, uh, on the one thing, I mean, this is the kind of the, uh, the now the supporting, uh, the widening, I mean, uh, the, the uh, income disparities among the peoples, uh, but also it can contribute to uh, the creating uh, global public goods in terms of the, uh, the ODA ramification. So I think that now the, uh, we are now facing uh, in a uh, moment of the, uh, the uh, revolutionizing our structure of the, uh, the ODA uh, towards the, uh, the new uh, direction of the, uh, the providing uh, more global public goods uh, through the uh, digitalization, through uh, the climate uh, crisis, combating against the climate crisis, and then, and then digitalization, and then green uh, uh, technology. Many people would think that um, the, what's, what's the problem with the digitalization? But digitalization create has, has destroyed uh, middle-skilled middle workers, 
middle scale workers' jobs was destroyed because of digitalization. So only un, very, a small amount of the unskilled and the high skilled can survive under the uh, digitalization. So we need to think about uh, these issues uh, when we are applying the, our ODA project to the developing countries. And also green technology as well. Green technology also, uh, most of the green technology is developed uh, in the advanced countries because the reason is, of course, I mean, the developing green technology in the advanced country is, I mean, uh, kind of the, the very market oriented. So they can make money uh, by developing the, uh, this green technology. But that kind of environment that cannot be provided in the, uh, the least uh, developed countries. So all of these kind of big changes, uh, uh, together with the, uh, the pandemic and then the war and bipolarization, all of things are a target for the, uh, the ODA. And also, I think that um, to provide the, uh, the more public uh, global goods, uh, then the, the strengthening of ODA and then changing the structure of the ODA is now very, very important. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you for uh, bringing the question of the uh, development assistance, ODA, and how it's being used now. And if you, as, as you say, if you look at aggregate numbers for ODA, they're now about 180 billion or so. They've gone up a little bit over the last uh, few years. But most of this increase is accounted for by increase in humanitarian assistance and by increase in including the financing of refugees inside the country that is providing the assistance. So the largest recipient of Swedish ODA today is Sweden. The largest recipient of UK ODA today is the UK <laughs> because that is where they're spending the largest share of their overseas assistance right now. Um,